George M. Bailey, Lieutenant Commander, USN, retired. Got, got through with that, and they sent me to the LSD-30, that's Fort Snelling, the landing ship dock. That was great, really. It, uh, there was nothing like being the underway officer at the deck at four in the morning. It's your ship, you're responsible for everything on it, everybody, and it's just a great feeling. It keeps you alert. And they sent me a letter, said you will be the communications officer, and you can bring your own radio. And I figured, thank God I'm not a dispersing officer, I'll bring my own money here. <laughs> but when I got aboard, uh, they gave me two more jobs, so it, that was probably my best learning experience. I worked with uh, a great captain, Captain Du Bois, who would, if I had a question, would help me. And uh, in fact, he was so great, when the squadron needed a salvage officer, he says, I've got one, George Bailey, here he is. And it was really great because we'd have a sunken boat and I'd go for it. They'd all get out of the way because I had my salvage flag flying. And, but it was a great learning experience. Well, <coughs> we were the fastest ship available, so we went right to Port Said, Egypt to evacuate the Americans from it. And I led the boats into Egypt to pick up the Americans that were there. And uh, got in there and the Egyptian officer told me, he says, you're lucky we let you come in. We were going to shoot you out of the water. And I said, you don't know how lucky you are. Because we have big guns on this ship. I didn't tell him we had a nuclear gun on that ship. And I, I was a nuclear control officer on there, and uh, every day for at least six months I went down in the morning and expense, inspected my uh, weapon. And every day the same Marine would ask me to show my same identification. <laughs> we did that for about six months. The Egyptians were, quote, going to war with Israel. And the Egyptians, being very smart, anchored their destroyer right next to us and used it as a gun platform. It's a very unusual situation, being in a war and not being able to do anything. Yeah, but we didn't have to worry because the Israelis took that ship right out. They, People saw it coming down and they're all clapping. And they put the bomb right down and stack and blew it up. <laughs> blew it up. Right next to us. They were good. <laughs> and the people in Egypt, their mindset was something different. They would, during an air raid, they go up on a roof and clap whenever they thought they hit an Israeli plane. And nine times out of ten, while the plane was coming down, it was coming down to deliver something. And uh, just unusual. But we were in general quarters for quite a while. And as a salvage officer, I was one to take the boats and to pick up the civilians. And one civilian was very, very pregnant. So we shipped her off to the USS Chilton because we didn't have any birthing accommodations. <laughs> it was a good thing, too, because she named her baby Chilton. I doubt she'd have named it Fort Snelling. But uh, then we also went into uh, Lebanon, where uh, I led the boats in again, and uh, didn't know what to expect. But we had one guy get shot, and that was it. it but the uh, Lebanese were having a great time in, in town shooting each other. 
So I guess it was about 13 tours to the Mediterranean. I was never there when somebody wasn't fighting somebody else. Got a set of orders. That was it. And as I remember, I was only just about the end of a six-month tour in Med, and I picked up the Willie Wood in the Med. <laughs>